What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. So today I'm on Table Rock Lake in Southern Missouri, and I've been hearing from a lot of my friends, local tackle shop, guides, and pretty much everyone who fishes on Table Rock Lake, that the bite was on fire out there, and that you can catch a ton of fish on jerk baits pretty much everywhere. And so I came to the lake prepared to make a video on how to fish jerk baits. I put four jerk bait rods in the deck of the boat to start the day. I did a whole intro talking about jerk bait fishing. I was explaining how I retrieved the bait, all kinds of stuff. And it's kind of funny because I was trying to make this video explaining to you how to catch fish on jerk baits when I didn't quite understand how to get these fish to bite on a jerk bait, which was evident by the fact that I didn't catch a fish for six hours. And it was very frustrating because I catch a lot of fish on jerk baits in a ton of different lakes and it's one of my confidence baits. But for whatever reason on this day, I just could not get these fish to bite the jerk bait. And I later found out that the fishing just wasn't that great that day in general. And even some of the locals weren't catching them on jerk baits that day. And so not knowing this while I was out in the lake, I was very frustrated because I went six hours on a lake that's supposed to be on fire without getting a single bite. And so what I decided to do is instead of packing up the truck, going home and feeling defeated, I wanted to take the last two hours of my day to try to find a way to catch fish. And the easiest way for me to do that is to start graphing offshore and looking for schools of fish because usually if I can see fish on my electronics on Table Rock, I can catch them. And I started fishing on some game and fish fish attractors. And if you have a game and fish that puts out fish attractors in your state, usually you can go to the game and fish website and find GPS coordinates for fish attractors. And on Table Rock, they have a ton of them out here. They have rock piles, brush piles, all kinds of stuff. And so I had already downloaded all of the fish attractors for Table Rock Lake. And so I just started by graphing a bunch of these fish attractors to see if I could see any fish. And I stumbled upon a row of rock piles that were just absolutely loaded. I mean, loaded with fish. And you can see on the graph here, there's fish everywhere. There's bait. They're in about 30, 35 feet of water. And I threw a half ounce football jig down there and caught one on my third cast. And I was like, oh, come on. I fish for six hours and I make three casts offshore and catch a keeper. And I continue fishing down some of these rock piles. And well, you'll see what happens. Now that's what I'm talking about, getting some tanks out here. Yes! Man, I don't know why I was so stubborn with that jerk bait all day long. Because, I mean, I came out here for 30 minutes, guys, and I'm loading the boat offshore out here on these rock piles. And it's just crazy because I know I catch a lot of good fish on a football jig this time of year offshore, but I was so stubborn trying to force that jerk bait bite that wasn't happening for me. I could just come out here and catch some awesome fish here in 30, 35 foot of water. This is crazy. You get back down there though, because they are chewing. That's the crazy thing, guys, is that a lot of times you might hear from a local guide, a friend, reading an article online, whatever, the fish are biting one way. And everyone was saying that the fish on Table Rock are chewing the jerk bait right now. And I'm sure that there are fish to be caught in a jerk bait. But for me, I just couldn't get it to get put it together today. And so instead of just forcing yourself to stick with the pattern that everyone else is saying is working, sometimes just going back to a pattern you have confidence in, like me throwing a jig offshore, is the way to catch fish just because that's what you know best how to do you understand the pattern you understand how the lake sets up for it and out here on table rock apparently i just didn't understand how these fish set up on that jerk bait on the points and all these different things and so for whatever reason it just wasn't happening but obviously making that change and going to what i'm confident in is putting fish in the boat fast and furious is what i'm talking about guys These are some big spotted bass out here. What the heck? <laughs> Look at these spots. Oh my gosh. That is a big one. It actually looks like a mean, or a, uh, it looks like a mean mouth actually, but that is a tank of a fish right there. Same exact bait. <laughs> Sorry, so I'm just, 
Oh, I'm so excited that I caught fish today. I just, I was struggling so much. I hate coming out and just not catching anything. And so it's just great to get these fish in the boat. Just throwing a half ounce Jewel football jig. It's actually a prototype jig. I'm working out with Jewel that uh, might be coming out as a Fish the Moment branded jig. But just a half ounce uh, football jig. And man, that is a nice one. Probably about a three pounder. I'm gonna weigh this guy actually because he's so big. Well, not quite, a two and three quarter. But uh, 270, that's a pretty big mean mouth right there. That's a good one. Oh man, love catching fish offshore on the football jig. That's three fish in like 15 minutes, guys. And I didn't get a bite all day with that jerk bait. So sometimes just changing it up, going where you have confidence in, definitely works. Oh, I'll put this guy back. Nice, 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 nice. Woo, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Love it, love it. Man, these fish are set up perfectly on the graph too. And you know, if we go back to these images I was showing earlier, these fish are just stacked up right on the break. There's shad down there. There's fish all over the graph. And you know, these are the type of spots that I look for in the winter time. And a lot of times it might take two, three, four hours of graphing to find them. And so a lot of times you might go all you know, 200, 300 yards, maybe even a couple miles of the lake before you find a spot like this. But in the winter time, usually if you spend enough time graphing around offshore, you're going to find an area where they're stacked up like this where you can catch them really quick. And you know, you can catch them on a football jig like I am now. I also have a uh, jigging spoon just in case if I see some fish underneath the boat. And so, you know, hopefully I'm gonna be able to get a few more fish off this spot. I have to get going here in a few minutes. The sun's about to go down, so I can't sit out here for too much longer, but I'm having a blast, I don't wanna leave. So let's take a closer look at the area where I'm catching these fish. And it's basically just a long tapering offshore point that drops off on two sides into a deeper creek channel. And on top of these points, you have several game and fish rock piles that they've planted. And I checked the rock piles as shallow as 15 feet of water and as deep as 45 feet of water, but I found the majority of the bait and the fish was in that 25 to 35 foot zone. And if we take a look at my down imaging from this spot, you can see there are just fish all over the place. And a lot of these dots are stacked pretty close together, but they're not more than two or three dots, maybe four dots tall, which let me know that these were bass. And if you do want to learn how to identify bass in your fish finder, check out this video up here. And I knew immediately that I could get these fish to bite. But one thing I did notice is that these fish were spread out pretty far along this drop. Basically, from the first rock pile for about 50 yards to the next rock pile. And the fish weren't really positioning on one particular rock pile, they were just kind of roaming up and down the edge of this point, moving from rock pile to rock pile. And that kind of has to do with the cloud cover we had on this day, and that cloud cover a lot of times makes these fish roam around. And so I started just throwing that football jig down there and I got some really good bites. So after catching three good fish on the football jig, I started having fish just peck the jig or short strike it. And a lot of times what happens on these areas that have spotted bass mixed with largemouth is that the bigger fish will eat that football jig first, but then the smaller fish won't actually be able to get the football jig all the way in their mouth. And so I decided to switch up to a bait that had a little bit smaller profile and had some treble hooks. And that's actually a blade bait. And a blade bait is basically just a big hunk of metal that has some hooks on it and it vibrates when you move it up and down. And I threw that bait down there and got a couple of fish to hit it before I actually connected with one, but then finally I hooked a fish. Some extra bites by changing baits and it definitely worked here. There we go. Look at that right there, blade bait fish. Not as big as the football jig fish, but still a decent one. This is just a, uh, I think it's called a ledge hog blade bait. Uh, I'll put a link in the description with the bait, but that's a nice little spotted bass right there on the old blade bait. That's what I'm talking about. And if you guys never fished a blade bait before offshore for fish, all you have to do is, let me get it hung real quick. Well, it's super simple, all you have to do is fire that bait out there let it sink down to the bottom and basically it's just a hunk of metal with some hooks hanging on it so it doesn't work that great when you're fishing around brush or like wood but if you're fishing like rock piles like i am here it's a great bait and all you have to do is just kind of lift your rod tip up that bait will vibrate as it goes up and let it fall back down to the bottom and just repeat that retrieve and you don't want to pull it super violently you just want to pull it two three feet off the bottom and it works really well when those fish are right on the bottom but they're kind of lethargic in the winter kind of like they are here and sometimes that bait gets kind of hung up. 
you have to hop it a few times, but basically you just want to feel that vibration of that bait moving up and down, and every once in a while, I want to come up and grab it. And one thing I really like about this specific blade bait I'm using is that it's a three quarter ounce blade bait, which means I can cover quite a bit of water with it, even when I'm fishing in 30 to 35 feet of water. And like I mentioned earlier, we have these cloudy skies, which is causing these fish to roam across this point. And so a lot of times dragging that jig down slowly is not a very efficient way to fish these areas, but fishing that blade bait up and down off the bottom is a great way to intercept those fish that are roaming around this point. And I seem to get a lot more bites on the blade bait than I did on the football jig. And I could also get them to connect with it when they swiped at it, just because I was throwing the treble hooks on it. So really quick guys, if you enjoy this video and want to support more content from Fish the Moment, one easy and free way to do that is by going to my website, fishthemoment.com, then going to the support Fish the Moment tab at the top of the screen. This will take you to a page with a couple different ways to support my channel. And one of those is my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link. All you have to do is click on this link, It'll take you straight to Tackle Warehouse, and then if you check out on Tackle Warehouse using that link, I'll get a small percentage of the profits from any purchases you make. And the way this works basically is that there's a little tag at the end of the Tackle Warehouse URL, question mark from equals fish the moment, and anytime you use that link, they'll know that I sent you to the website. And so one way to make sure you always use this link when you shop at Tackle Warehouse is just to bookmark the page and add that to your bookmarks bar. That way, anytime you go to Tackle Warehouse from that bookmark link, you'll be taken straight to Tackle Warehouse using my link, and I'll always get credit for all your purchases. So if you do like the content on my YouTube channel and want to support me further, this is a really easy and free way to do it, and I really appreciate you guys taking a few minutes to do that. There we go. Getting them side swung, they're swiping at it. It's another spotted bass though here on that blade bait sometimes i'll swipe at that thing and miss it it's kind of what they were doing that football jig earlier that's kind of why i went to the blade bait a lot of times when they're just missing that football jig a lot of times in these cloudy sky days they'll do that picking up that blade bait or some other bait that's kind of like a moving bait sometimes we'll get those fish in the boat a little bit better and so definitely try that on these cloudy days on the sunny days those fish will lock down on the rocks a little bit better and you won't have to worry about them missing the football jig and also it'll cause them to roam a lot less right now you fish are kind of roaming around i'm seeing them all underneath my boat all over the grass and you kind of just see them all up and down this drop there's three or four rock piles on this drop and it's just kind of interesting because on these cloudy days these fish love to roam but on the sunny days they'll go straight to the rocks they'll get right in a tight group you can catch them just one after another after another. And so, kind of have to play by ear offshore by the day, but man, this has definitely turned my day around. In about 45 minutes of fishing, I already put five fish in the boat and missed several others. Oh, got another one. Oh, my camera in the back just died, so we're gonna have to do this old fashioned style with my front chest camera on the GoPro. This blade bait is definitely working. These fish are a lot smaller on the blade bait, but they're still eating it. There we go. Another one on the blade bait. Now we're really putting some damage to them. Okay guys, so the sun's about to set, so I'm gonna head out of here, but I had to blast salvaging my day with that blade bait and the football jig offshore in these rock piles. And it just goes to show, sometimes the dock talk and what the local guides or the local reports tell you is working, doesn't always work for you. It's hard to catch other people's fish, and so if you're struggling on the water, trying to do what everyone else is doing, try something different, stick to what you know, what you have confidence in, and a lot of times it'll help you put a lot more fish in the boat. So thanks again for checking this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one.